Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice logarithmic equation. We have log x with base 3 equals log 2x with base 2. So log equations are usually easy to solve, but this one is a little problematic because the bases are different. So you can use the definition of logs, obviously. So if you have log a with base b equals x, then you can basically say that b to the power x is equal to a. Or if you have b to the x equals a, then you can write the log equation. But the problem here is if you do that, for example, if you take 3 as a base and write this as 3 to the power log 2x with base 2 equals x, this is not going to help you. Because you're going to have x on both sides and there's no way to kind of extract the x or isolate it and, you know, f uh, take it out or so on and so forth. So this is a little problematic. I'm going to be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to set both of these equal to something. So I'm going to use substitution. Substitution is awesome, solves a lot of problems, simplifies things. Let's go ahead and set, since uh, the, they are equal, we can set them equal to the same thing, like let's say both of these are equal to y. Okay? And from here, you hopefully know why I'm doing this, you, by using the definition twice, you first get 3 to the power y equals x, and then you get 2 to the power y equals 2x. Awesome. We got two equations, and obviously uh, they give you different things, but they basically they basically are related. For example, x and 2x, you know, 2x is 2 times x, in other words. Make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and relate these together. So what I can do is I can multiply this equation both sides by 2. That's going to give me 2 times 3 to the y equals 2x. And since 2x is equal to 2 to the y, then these two are equal. Okay? So this is what I got so far. 2 to the y equals 2 times 3 to the y. So um, for, for these kinds of problems, a lot of times people are going to try to put the 2's together and then because they can be combined and then try to solve for y. You can do that. That's definitely fine. But instead, I'm going to bring the y's together. It's, it's a wiser way to do it. So divide both sides by 3 to the y. And then you can basically write this as 2 over 3 to the power y equals 2. And at this point, you have a lot of choices, again, using definitions or logging both sides. And I, I'm going to use natural log. So let's go ahead and ln both sides. Okay? Make sense? So I'm going to move this a little bit to the right so I can fit the ln there. Let's go ahead and ln both sides. So ln this equals ln this. And then this y is a power, so we can go ahead and move it to the front. We get y times ln 2 thirds equals ln 2. I'm not going to write the parentheses because I think with one number it's understood, but you can write it if you want. And then I'm going to divide both sides by ln 2 thirds, which can also be written as ln 2 minus ln 3 if you want because of the quotient rule. No big deal. You can do either one. Now, we got y, but remember, y was our kind of dummy variable. It was temporary. We need to back substitute. But what is y? y is one of these, either this one or that one. Whichever one you choose doesn't matter. I'm going to go with the first one, log x with base 3. Log x with base 3 is y. And then y happens to be ln 2 over ln 2 thirds. I'm just going to use the first version. Okay? So at this point, since you want to solve for x, that makes sense if you isolate it, right? So again, by using the definition, 3 is the base, this will be the exponent, and x will be the result. You see how logs work? Easy, right? Once you get the definition, pretty much, you can do a lot of problems. So from here, we get x equals 3 to the power ln 2 over ln Two thirds. Like I said earlier, if you want, you can write ln two thirds as ln two minus ln three, but no big deal. Okay, so that's going to give us the value of x. This is just one way to do it. 
Let's go ahead and talk about this second method and maybe if there's a third way to do it, uh, I think you're gonna let me know, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Now, second method actually uses a really nice formula. I'll tell you why. So we have this equation, log x with base three and log two x with base two. When the bases are different, you don't wanna keep it that way, obviously, right? You wanna change it. But there's something called change of base which can actually help you a lot. So let's go ahead and use the change of base formula. And let me tell you what it is real quick. Change of base formula works like this. So if you have something like log, let's say, A with base B, then let's say you want to turn it into another base, let's say base X. You can kind of put the two logs with base X and then write the A here and B here. So A goes here, B goes here, and then you're done. That's called the change of base or COB. So if you apply it, in what base are you gonna use though, right? Doesn't matter. You can use any base. You can use base 10, you can use LN. Let's use base 10. So base 10 is basically, if you have something base 10, I'm just gonna write it without the base. So log X without the base means base 10. Make sense? So let's go ahead and write this in base 10. How do you do that? You put log over log because we don't write the base and then x goes here and 3 goes here. That's the first number. And then the second one is just going to be log 2x. Remember, 2x is going to be in the numerator and that's divided by log 2. Make sense? Awesome. Now, this is not the end of it because we still have to solve for x. But to be able to solve for x, you must solve for log x. And now we're going to use exponentiation. So let's go ahead and cross multiply. If you cross multiply here, you're gonna get log x log two equals log three log two x. And then you can definitely, you know, write the log two x as log two plus log x because of the product rule if you have the log of a product, then you can write it as sum of two logs, and just like the quotient rule with a plus sign. And then now we get this. Can we solve for log x? Yes, but first you need to simplify this. Let's, let's go ahead and simplify this. Log x times log two equals log three times log two plus log three times log x. Awesome. Then what do we do? Since we're trying to solve for x, let's go ahead and bring this over to the left by subtraction, and we can take out a log x, gives us log two minus log three equals log three times log two. Awesome, this is a negative quantity, but don't worry about it, that's perfectly fine, because if log of something is negative, that just means the whole thing is less than one, because the graph of a log function is basically has an x-intercept at one and anything less than one is gonna give us an output uh, that's negative. For, uh, of course, x, right? And then this is divided by log two minus log three. We're almost there. This is log x and then remember, 10 to the power log x is the same as x. So if you go ahead and put this as 10 to the power, from here you're gonna get x equals 10 to the power log three times log two divided by log two minus log three. Again, as an exponent, a negative number it just means that it's the reciprocal. It doesn't mean the number is negative because x is not negative, obviously, in this case, right? And that will be the answer. Is there another way to approach this problem? Probably. Please let me know what you think. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.